Hi, I'm a hobby woodworker uh, who's been dabbling in woodworking projects for a better part of about, I would say, 10 years. Um, obviously started like uh, a lot of hobby woodworkers in terms of uh, using uh, tools from Sears, Craftsman, migrated up to DeWalt. Then of course, uh, I found a company called as Fest Tool, I think it was about seven, eight years ago, um, and started buying into, into the, to the Fest Tool system. Uh, I've loved the Festool tools uh, since I purchased my first TS55 and MFT. Uh, obviously, like every 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 tool out there, they have their own uh, issues and uh, you know problems. But uh, by and large, uh, they are, uh, from my perspective, my point of view, uh, the the best out there. And that really comes from the fact that uh, uh, when I started, uh, like I said, you know, eight ten years ago. Uh, I was an amateur, still am an amateur, of course, um, but uh, have um, you know improved my skill sets. If you uh, uh, skill sets over the many many years of you know trying out, making mistakes, uh, learning, learning from others, using the fog as a resource. Um, the one big thing that I did uh, uh, learn, you know, uh, a bit late, but many many years ago, was that you do need uh, the tools to be. Uh, of good quality and of course of uh, uh, of uh, and, and support the skill sets that you have and that's where I think festival comes in from from an amateur like my uh, like me as I mentioned before um, I did purchase the TS55 and the MFT as my first fest tools um, and then I've progressed significantly over uh, many many years I've purchased a number of fest tools I purchased sustainers uh, that I put my other tools in, um, and while all of these are really good, especially uh, some of the fest tools that I've had for many years, uh, the one uh, game-changing, again from my point of view, uh, game-changing uh, tool uh, really is the uh, the the domino, uh, both the, uh, the the little domino and the big domino. Um, I purchased the domino right after they came out. Um, um, you know. Uh, joinery was not my strength. I have done uh, all types of joinery, if you may, right from pocket hole screws to uh, uh, mortise and tenon joints to uh, um, uh, to uh, to dovels to everything else that's out there, right? Uh, the uh, but uh, when I first saw the promo for the Domino, um, I absolutely made up my mind that that was going to revolutionize. Uh, how the industry did uh, joinery, but more importantly, uh, from, from my point of view, uh, how I would uh, tackle my projects going forward. Um, little did I know when I first purchased the Domino, and I forget when it came out, but I've had it for so long, um, and I've used it in every project since, every project uh, that I've worked on, uh, whether it's um, in a number of cabinets that I've built or you know, furniture, uh, um, I've done quite a few pieces of, uh, ma uh, you know, fireplace mantles, both for myself and uh, my, my family. And I've used the Domino in every single project uh, that I've done. And I'm trying to recollect any project that I've done from a woodworking uh, perspective if I've not used the Domino. Uh, but uh, the, little did I know when I purchased the Domino first that it will be completely game changing. Uh, so it's just not something that you would use to, let's say, put together a face frame. But essentially, the entire project end to end can be done. Uh, all the joinery can be done using the Domino. Um, and when the when the Domino first came out, uh, I assumed that I would be able to use it for everything. Uh, but then, uh, a year or two ago, Festool introduced the the DF seven hundred, which is the big brother uh, to the Domino DF five hundred. And um, I have to say that. Um, I have increased the range of abilities that I've had with the Domino and uh, I've, I've been able to uh, do a lot more projects. So one big uh, project that I did uh, in the cold, I live in the Northeast, uh, about a couple of months ago was to work on a project uh, for a friend of mine. He had seen a, uh, uh, a coffee table that he wanted me to replicate and um, it was a big massive one. 
um, you know, eight quarter inch uh, lumber that we had to plane and, and, and you know, significant um, in size. And while I could have used the Domino DF500, um, uh, I was able to use the, the, uh, the unique abilities that a DF700 gives, which is really to replicate uh, or um, uh, it has the functions and features uh, of a desktop uh, mortising machine. I'm going to start off by uh, introducing the, the DF500, which is the smaller of the two dominoes. Um, uh, most woodworkers will find, again from my experience, that uh, the DF500 will support uh, the majority of projects that they will work on. Um, <clears throat> It's because the, uh, you know, while it is the smaller of the two dominoes, it does have all the capabilities that you would need from a fine woodworking perspective. And I, like I said, I've used this for many, many years and um, have built quite a number of projects on it uh, before I purchased the DF700. Let's start off by introducing the various components. Uh, um, no surprise here, for folks who know Festool, it comes with the plug-it cord. Um, comes with uh, various devices here that I can uh, walk you through uh, that allows you to um, do various attachments, help uh, stabilize the domino, if you may. Um, does come with uh, traditional scales that allows you to uh, uh, to uh, perfect, uh, to have perfect dominoes that are spaced evenly across. And I uh, will show you how we would fit these uh, tools in. Uh, does obviously come with the, uh, with the Domino DF500. I've had this since it was introduced, so I've used it quite extensively, but still looks fairly new for a machine that I've used for uh, quite a few projects. Um, I did purchase the full kit that came with the additional uh, uh, additional bits, the Domino bits, and uh, uh, my, my kit obviously came with uh, um, a, a huge selection of uh, Domino tenants as well. So just quickly going through some of the features of the Domino DF500. Um, oh, before I go into the features, uh, the way this machine works, really, it, it's quite simple. Uh, you, you set the machine up to whatever piece of wood that you want to drill a mortise into. That is it. And it's a portable machine, so you essentially uh, set up the, uh, the piece of wood that you want to set up your mortise into. You clamp it. I use the MFT here. I'm using the MFT here for clamping uh, my piece of wood. You notice what happens with the domino is that there's a bit that slides out of the machine, and it's uh, it has a uh, uh, a rotating motion. But more importantly, it has an oscillating function, and the oscillating function is what creates the the, the domino tenon. And I will demonstrate that in a quick second. I've hooked up the uh, the domino to uh, to a Festool uh, CT22 dust extractor, and I've plugged in the plug-in cord. Um, essentially, the the dust extractor is, extractor is important because uh, uh, the, uh, the Festool's mantra is that they you know they're completely um, uh, dust-free, and uh, hooking up the dust extractor proves that uh, you will end up with a mortise that is quite clean and, and and it's quite important that it's clean with the dust extractor so that when you put in glue you don't have to blow it out or you know clean the mortise at all and then the dust extractor takes care of that. Um, as I mentioned before I go into the details here is how the domino works. I'm going to turn it on and I'll show you the oscillating function that it has uh, and uh, show you how the plunge works uh, so it creates the domino. Quite loud, but uh, essentially, uh, as you saw in the in the uh, in the oscillating function of the bit, the the domino, uh, uh, while the bit plunges into the piece of wood, it actually creates a uh, a domino uh, that is the shape of a mortise. And of course, the the way the dominoes work are that you plug in uh, the uh, these are loose tenons essentially. So while I keep calling it a mortise, it is a loose tenon, tenon joinery system. And uh, essentially, you would use the uh, the various dominoes that you purchased from Festool uh, to uh, to act as the loose tenon. Moving on, um, <clears throat> the the domino can be adjusted for a couple of things. Uh, one is uh, the the height of the of the piece of wood that you're working on, um, and you can uh, and you can essentially adjust that by moving the fence up or down, um, and this allows you to adjust the the loose tenon or the mortise. Uh, at uh, height relative to the piece of wood that you're working on, and then uh, you 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 essentially 
tighten the fence uh, to whatever height that you want to adjust to. The second adjustment is the uh, uh, is the is the angle of the morty. So uh, not alone you can work on mortis that are 90 degrees or a 180 or uh, any uh, uh, any uh, angle between uh, between uh, zero to uh, to 180. Now you have to lock the fence down uh, quite tight because when the more when the, the when the domino first came out and as I mentioned I, I purchased the domino um, uh, when it initially came out it does have what I would call what I categorize as a flaw uh, was that the the fence would not lock down very tight and I I had uh, my fence slip on me uh, quite a few times when I were when I was working on projects and I was figuring out that I was doing it incorrectly eventually I figured out that the fence itself was creeping on me uh, and later um, I I found out from the fog and from uh, other uh, uh, resources on the web that it really wasn't a flaw as much as the fact that you had to uh, adjust this knob here so that uh, the fence could be locked on tight and once I did that which I think a lot of uh, uh, folks who have the Domino DF500 don't realize is that you do have to tighten uh, or rather adjust this knob so that the fence locks down tight. Once I did the adjustment, I've never had the issue of the fence slipping on me. Um, and part of the reason I bought this uh, Seneca uh, add-on fence that supports the three quarter inch and a half inch uh, uh, adjustment. This is so that you don't have to adjust the uh, uh, the fence, the, the, the built-in fence relative to the piece of wood you're working on. Uh, um, and so this has worked out really well and a shout out to the Seneca guys, this is amazing. I still use it in spite of making the adjustment that uh, stops my fence from creeping. I do use it simply because if I have to do uh, a lot of um, um, uh, domino uh, um, mortises uh, uh, on, a, on a cabinet project, rather than use the, uh, the movable fence, I, I bolt this on and it makes my life a lot easier. You know, it just makes it a lot simpler to, to use. Okay. Um, just moving along, uh, talking about the, the rest of the, the functions. Um, I have the first version of the Domino, came in with these double pins. Essentially, these are registration pins uh, that you use. You, you drill your first Domino in, and then you use the registration pin to, uh, to align to the next, uh, next set of uh, Domino holes, if you may. And, and part of why you do that is, if you were connecting uh, and making a face frame of Two pieces of wood. Uh, you could do it two different ways. You could, you could set it up, draw a pencil line here, and then, and then essentially use the registration marks on the domino to uh, to to drill the mortise. Or what you would do is you would use this registration pin to drill your first mortise, and then use this or the second side to essentially drill the second mortise as well. So the registration pins are a, an amazing way, uh, amazing error, error uh, 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 amazing way of avoiding any errors that you could introduce uh, uh, while you're using a pencil and, a, and, a mar and, and using a pencil to mark your uh, piece of wood. Uh, uh, the Domino also has a, a really slick uh, feature where you can adjust this knob that uh, adjusts the size of the domino that's being drilled from um, the, the leftmost uh, knob is, is the exact width of the domino that you're looking to drill. The remaining two ones essentially allow you to uh, adjust the, uh, uh, the, the size of the domino, which is against its width, slightly bigger. And this allows you to uh, adjust your piece of wood uh, if, if you introduce any errors. Um, as you're drilling these mortises. So, so, you know, it has so many functions that allows you to be precise in what you do, starting from the registration pins. Um, I, I introduced these things before. They essentially are registration pins that allow you to extend the pins that are out here uh, to a lot longer. So if you, if you were, let's say, joining uh, uh, a number of boards together, a number of boards for gluing them up together, and I use that all the time. I, I actually use the dominoes so that you know, when I clamp the boards that I'm trying to join uh, together, uh, they don't move and the, and the domino is absolutely superb in helping ensure that they don't move. They don't add any strength over and above the glue, but it does help with the uh, uh, with aligning and uh, registration. So these two go left and right and love you to, uh, uh, to get an extended registration pin. Uh, the remaining two are really additional fences. So I've noticed that 
when you're drilling, uh, <clears throat> when you're keeping a piece of board right up here, and uh, and when you're trying to drill a a series of uh, uh, vortices to this fence, having the having just this registration of fence and this really, uh, you know, you you can rock the domino as you drill it. And this is another God's uh, lifesaver where you essentially attach this fence to the domino and use this fence to help stabilize uh, this cut. You can do the same thing as well if you were uh, going to do a vertical mortise. Uh, it just gives you an additional surface area, if you may, uh, to increase the, uh, uh, the stability of your uh, domino. Uh, the last thing I want to introduce on the Domino DF500, I think I mentioned this before, I have a number of bits, uh, they go all the way from uh, 4, uh, which is the 4mm bit that I have here, uh, all the way up to 10mm, so it's fairly versatile in what it does. Uh, next I want to introduce the DF700, uh, this is the Big Brother Domino, uh, if you notice it is uh, sitting on one of the biggest, uh, bigger sustainers and that's because it is a big, uh, big machine. Um, it dramatically increases the capacity uh, from the DF500, uh, 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 has the same set, if you, if you look from uh, the capabilities it is quite quite different in terms of the, the, the range of abilities it has. But from, uh, from purely the packaging and the machinery in there, it is, uh, uh, it is exactly the same as the Domino uh, 500. Starts with the Domino uh, machine itself. This is the, uh, I, f I feel the, the finish on this is uh, a little better than the uh, DF500, uh, but essentially it's the same, uh, same machine. A significant improvement that I know and I forgot to mention it when I was showing the DF500 was that on the DF500 you really don't uh, hold the domino where it was where it was originally designed. I hold the domino all the way to the back where the plug it cord comes in so that I do not rock the machine as I'm plunging in these dominoes, uh, the domino holes. With the DF700, uh, Festool has uh, changed the design so you're essentially pushing uh, the, 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 the domino uh, all from the back so that it does not rock as you're plunging in these uh, uh, these mortises. Uh, uh, substantial machine uh, compared to the uh, the DF500, it is uh, it's actually quite significant uh, in size, uh, but that comes because of the fact that it does have uh, uh, it, it does have some major capabilities. The motor is obviously big. Uh, uh, the 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 actual uh, uh, domino bits are significant compared to the ones that uh, that the DF500 has. Uh, the the fence and the handle to the fence is also significant. Uh, the problem that I mentioned with the DF500, which I did fix with the DF500, is completely gone. Uh, this fence locks down uh, uh, quite uh, quite quite well, and it has the same capabilities. So you're able to adjust the height of the fence relative to the, the piece of wood you're working. It allows you to adjust the uh, the angle of the domino depending on the, you know, uh, the angle of the wood you're working on. And <clears throat> it has a couple of additional capabilities over and above what the DF500 has. It, it allows you to adjust the plunge uh, in two different ways. One, you know, is to in terms of uh, the first one you want and the second. And, and that's an amazing uh, ability because you can actually adjust uh, how deep or long you want up front for the entire project. Uh, uh, it works exactly the same way as the uh, Domino 500. That's the size of the bit. And you notice how uh, massive it is compared to the 4mm bit that I had before. And essentially this bit, again, oscillates and uh, uh, and rotate so that it creates this uh, the the loose tenon uh, loose tenon uh, mortises. Uh, the uh, the DF500 has a uh, has a different way. These are again registration pins, uh, but they're not plunge in pins uh, unlike the uh, like my original uh, uh, Domino DF500. Uh, they all slip in, and there's actually uh, six of them, three on each side, and you can essentially push them in if you're not using them or uh, you unlock and you you decide to um, or you select which registration pin you want based on the 
uh, on the domino you're plunging. You can do that on both ways. So if you if you were going to use the middle one, you would essentially set up the middle registration pin uh, on both sides. So that's that's to cut the domino left or right. Uh, in addition to that, all the accessories that I showed in the DF500 actually fit in here. So it Festool is truly a system. Uh, you know the uh, the uh, the Festool uh, uh, dust collector hose, the plug-in cord, they all interchange, and they all interchange. Uh, uh, the, the 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 additional accessories that I showed actually interchange with the uh, with the DF500 as well. Um, uh, those are all the features I wanted to show. The the, the DF700 only has two uh, positions that allow you to select either the the original size of the domino or a slightly larger one. And I think that's that's the majority of what you need because on the DF500. I've actually never used the first or the last uh, option because I've always used the one in the middle which slightly long edge the uh, uh, domino because you really don't get a lot of strength from the side of the domino, at least from my experience. It is really the, uh, uh, the, the, the face of the domino where the majority of the strength is. So with that, uh, I obviously did not go into a lot of details, uh, but I did want to give an uh, introduction. And I wanted to show some of the projects that I uh, worked on. I will do that uh, yeah, I mean, uh, in the next segment of this video. But with that, I hope uh, um, you know I was able to at least uh, give some uh, uh, view of you know how these tools uh, are great from uh, from you know someone who's an amateur and someone who was getting into woodworking. And while they're pricey, they're absolutely amazing. That you will forget the price of these things the minute you start using them. So with that, thank you so much. I uh, uh, hope you enjoy the video.